got a structure determination question here you can test yourself with so I've put the link to the question in the description so if you want to just click on that have a go at the question and then watch the video again for the answer okay so we'll start with the easy stuff the elemental analysis by mass so it's obviously an empirical formula um, calculation so just quickly knock up a table of the elements and so we've got 73.17% of carbon, 7.32% hydrogen, 19.51% oxygen. I'm going to divide those by the MRs, 12, 1, 16. And we get, uh, in terms of moles, we get 6.10, 7.32, 1 1.22. So if we divide by the smallest, which is the 1.22, obviously we get 165 so the empirical formula let's put ef is c5 h6o so that's got an mr of 82 and we're told that in the mass spectrum the molecular ion peak is at m over z164 so that's the mr of the molecule so obviously it's more than just the 82 actually twice as much and so therefore the molecular formula is C10 H12 O2 so you wouldn't get a massive amount of marks for that but obviously you've got to process those results right so if we move on to the infrared spectrum we've got two key peaks that you would need to identify here I always tell my students to annotate your spectra. So there's one of the key peaks. That's C double bond O. And this is another key peak here, this broad absorption in that range. What's that? Sort of between two and a half thousand to about what's that? Three, 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 four, something like that. So if you go to your data sheet, this is the OH of a carboxylic acid. Let's put C A for short. So what we, we we could write now is that this uh, unknown substance is a carboxylic acid. Okay, so now we've done that, we've got to go to the tricky part, which is processing the NMR spectrum. Right, so we've got the proton NMR spectrum, and it's carried out in D2O. So the first thing I'm going to say is, what does that mean? It means that the COOH proton has been removed. So D2O removes um, OH protons and NH protons, so amine protons. Uh, well, obviously haven't got any amine protons, so it's obviously the carboxylic acid proton that we've, we've already established that it's a carboxylic acid. So that's not going to be shown in this spectrum. So I'm literally just going to go across the spectrum. I'll go left to right, and I'm just going to talk about each peak and I'm going to jot down, annotate my spectrum, which I always tell the students to do. And I'm just going to build up, bit by bit, the molecule. So if we start at this uh, peak, sort of, what's that, 7 point, 7 point 7.2, something like that. So you go to your data sheet. Now, the, remember the OH proton's been removed. So that's the only other option other than the um, aromatic protons. So what we've got here are aromatic protons and the peak area four means that there must be four of them so essentially we've got a benzene ring with four hydrogens on now we don't know where the four hydrogens are i'm just going to spread them across like that what this is telling us therefore is that we've got two substituent groups um, on this benzene ring. Now, these protons could be anywhere. You could have one, two, three, four. Okay, they could be all around like that, and your two substituents there and there. It doesn't doesn't matter for this question. Okay, so you obviously you're going to be marked on what what you've processed there. Just to point out as well that for certainly for OCR chemistry, and I'm sure it's the same for the other exam boards as well. You don't have to analyze the splitting pattern in an aromatic signal. Okay, so don't worry about what the what the signal looks like. 
if you've got something between you know seven and eight um, it's an aromatic proton okay so that's what we've got so far right so I'm going to move to this peak so I've switched color of pen so hopefully it kind of stands out a little bit so we'll go to the data sheet and we've got uh, the environment as per the data sheet is H C C double bond O, which is obviously consistent with a carboxylic acid. Right, so the key things we need to say here is we need to say what kind of signal it is. It's a quartet. So get that word in. Um, what does a quartet mean? There are three adjacent protons. So three adjacent H's. And the area of one means there is one hydrogen or proton in the environment. Okay, so I'm just going to go down here to draw this little part of the um, structure. Remember I said at the start, I'm going to build it up bit by bit. So we've got this bit so far. So we're now going to sort of look at what this bit's going to actually look like in the molecule. So we've got a single proton bonded to a carbon that's then bonded to a C double bond O. And adjacent to that is a CH3 group. And that's what's caused the quartet. So obviously we've got something there and something there. Now we know that it's a carboxylic acid. And so if I just switch color, it's very likely that that's going to be that part of the molecule closed off. Okay. And remember this proton doesn't appear in this spectrum because of the D to O. Okay, so we'll move on to this tall signal at about, what's that, 2.3, something like that, 2.3. So what have we got here? Well, environment-wise, we've got, remember, we know that it's aromatic, so the other obvious thing to go for is the benzene ring, carbon, and the hydrogen bonded to that carbon. So this signal here is being caused by protons in this environment. So what are the key things we would need to write about this? Well, we'd need to say that it's a singlet. And what does that mean? It's not bonded or there are no adjacent hydrogens to this. There are three, it's got an area of three, so there are three hydrogens in the environment. So what's this part of the molecule going to look like? Well, we must have the benzene ring with a CH3 attached. So sort of separate substituent group, which ties in with the fact that we've got two substituent groups. So it's looking like this part of the molecule here, this bond here is going to go to one of these carbons on the benzene ring. Okay, so we'll just finish off with this peak here. This is at, what's at 1.5, just over 1.5. So this is your kind of bog standard um, HCR environment. It's a doublet. So get the keyword in. Therefore, it's adjacent to one proton. And the area is three, so there are three hydrogens in the environment. Okay, so if we go back to something we've already established, remember this blue signal here was due to this proton here, so the H to C to C double bond O, and it was split into that quartet from these three protons in this CH3 group. Well, what we've got is the kind of the, the flip side of that. So this purple signal is due to these protons here. Okay, so that they class they're not in any special environment. Um, so they appear at this range. There's three in the environment, area three. They're adjacent to a single hydrogen. So they would show as a doublet, which is going on here. So if I just overwrite this with the purple pen, and now that kind of ties in with the color coding. 
So we've got our molecule now. So if I just draw it on the left hand side, I've got a bit of space. Um, so we've got, I'll do it on its side. I'm going to put them at 1, 4, but the mark scheme says allow any any sort of dye substituted benzene ring. So it doesn't have to be 1, 4, it could be 1, 2, 1, 3 or 1, 4. So let's put the CH3 there because I haven't got as much room. And let's go for the rest of this. So we've got that carbon with the hydrogen, CH3 and a COOH. And that's the answer.